Welcome to the second video from the DJ Podcast in the How to DJ with Tractor Pro 2 series. In this video, we're going to be talking about customizing the user interface. One of the great things about Tractor Pro 2 is that it really lets you customize the interface to your liking. We're going to start customizing the interface by looking at the browser first. If you want to customize what columns you have in your browser, you can simply right click in the space that's next to the column name and you can see here that we have all sorts of different options that you can have shown as a column in your browser. To add, you can simply just click on one of the options, for example, the release, and you can see here that now we have the release in the browser. And to get rid of it, you simply right click again and click to remove that option. Now once you have the columns that you like, you can also expand the columns for example, you can resize like by dragging the space next to the name and you can see there's a little icon that your cursor turns into here. You can also move a column by clicking on its name and dragging it to the right or to the left. When you're done customizing the columns and the size and order of the columns, you want to open up your preferences and go to the browser details tab. Okay, now we're in the browser details tab. I'm gonna go through the options. The first one up here is allow inline editing in list window. If you have this option selected, you can go in and edit the ID3 tag information in the browser directly without using an external program. I choose to disable this option because I do all of my tagging on a separate program and I don't want to accidentally remove, for example, the title or the BPM of a track by accidentally clicking the wrong button. You can also select the font and the font size that Tractor uses to display all of the information in the columns. If, for example, you DJ and the laptop is usually far away from you, you may want to increase the font size so that you can see the text better from farther away. You can also include to show a preview player, which is here, so that you could preview a track before you put it into a deck. You can also choose to show the cover art which will be located right here. In addition, there's a few other options. You can have your playlist favorites here. You can also have the track information. Finally, you have the status bar, which will show error messages or information about the tracks that you have in your collection. Once you're done customizing your browser, it's time to start customizing the overall layout of Tractor Pro 2. And we're gonna start by going to the Layout Manager. You can see that Tractor Pro comes with four different layouts by default. You can change to a different layout by simply clicking on it in the preferences or by using this drop down menu right here. If you want to customize a layout without changing one of the default ones, simply click the add button and then select a layout that you would like to base your new layout on. So for this, I'll just click mixer and you can see now that I have copy one of mixer. If you want to rename that, click on the layout that you want to rename. Enter a new name up here at the top and then click rename. And you can see that it's now called grid. Now that I've got a new layout assigned, I need to change the options that I want my deck to show. I'm in the decks tab now and I'm gonna go through and set up the interface how I would like it and kind of show you along the way what I'm doing. The first option that we have is our deck flavor. For this, we can choose between a track deck, a sample deck, or a live input. Because I usually mix with two decks at a time, I'm also going to turn off deck C and D, which I can do by clicking enable C and D. Now you see that I have two decks and they're both sized to full. If for example, I wanted to have multiple decks going at a time, I may want to change my deck layout. So maybe I want micro, which makes them really small, small, which makes them a little bit larger, essential, which just shows the essential information as Tractor deems it, full, which gives me almost all of the options, or advanced, which has every single option, including the move, queue, and grid options. You can see here that the platter and scope options are grayed out and that's because I do not use Tractor Scratch Pro. Underneath here with the advanced tabs you can see that we have move, queue, and grid. You can set one of them in the preferences but you can also switch between them by clicking here in the advanced options. You also have the choice to show a cover art which appears on the top left and the phase meter which appears directly in the center of the deck. You can see that I've now loaded a track and that Tractor displays the nine different 
options that I have for the deck settings. There's a bunch of different settings that you can choose from and it's really up to you how you want to display that information. We also have a couple other options that go along with our decks. For example, you can change the way that the grid mode looks. So for example, you could change it to ticks or dim or just turn off all of the grid markers on the display there. You can also choose to show the minute markers in your track. You can have a track end warning, which will flash your track a certain amount of time before the track is over. You can change where the play marker position is in the track. You can change the default zoom how much information you show on the stripe down here, and the color mode of the waveform. This is a new feature in Tractor Pro 2, and I personally like to have it on Spectrum. As you can see, Tractor Pro 2 really allows you to customize the layout to your liking. Stay tuned for more Tractor Pro 2 videos, and check us out at thedjpodcast.com. Thanks for watching.